So have you ever wondered how you can add some nice screen transitions between your game scenes? You know, things like a fade to black, a crossfade, or even sliding panels. Well, today we're going to see that in our modern game engines, that's actually quite easy to do. Hello everyone, I'm Mina, and in this new Godot 4 c -sharp tutorial, we're going to discover how to create custom transition effects for all scene changes. Oh, and just before we dive in, don't forget that if you want to support the channel and get some exclusive rewards like mini games, tools, plugins, and assets, you can check out my brand new Patreon. Plus, if you go for the highest square member status, you'll even get to vote for future tutorial topics at least once a month. So, feel free to have a look. Alright, first of all, let's see how to actually go from one scene to another in Godot. In this tutorial, I'll use those two basic demos, and the goal will be to switch to the other scene when we click the button in the corner of the screen. Each scene root node has a scene manager script with a callback function linked to the pressed signal of the button. And this callback function is where we'll need to call our switch scene logic in a little while. Also, we're going to make sure that each scene manager defines the right target scene string path, which will allow us to know what scene we need to switch to when we click the button. So to handle this switch, we're going to prepare a global scene transition manager, parallel to the scenes, to take care of both the transition logic on the button click and the visual switch. To do this, we'll rely on a really cool good tool called the autoload. We actually talked a bit about those in these previous episodes of the series, but in a nutshell, Godot's autoload are special nodes or scripts that you define in your project to be auto-instantiated when the game starts at the root of the game tree, which means that these autoloads are next to the current scene and they will remain throughout the entire session. This makes them really interesting for storing shared data, defining global logic that you want to access from anywhere, or creating cross-scene elements, like here. In our case, the trick will be the following. First, we'll create a new scene in our project of UI type, so with a control root node, and we'll save it as scene transition.tscn. Then we'll open up our project settings panel, and in the autoload tab, we'll browse our assets and add our new .tscn file to the list. Note that if we want, we can change the name of the node that Godot will auto-instantiate this autoload as at runtime. Here, the default name is fine, but it's important to keep this autoload name in mind since this will be the way to access the autoload in our code when the game is running. So now, if we start our game, Godot will auto-instantiate this scene transition scene next to our demo level. Now, of course, since this scene doesn't contain anything at the moment, it's not obvious. But if we come back to the editor and we check the remote scene hierarchy, meaning the hierarchy we currently have in our running game, we see that there's indeed our scene transition node at the root of the tree. What's really nice is that now, if we add a C-sharp script on this scene transition UI node, for example, scene transition.cs, we'll be able to easily get it and call its method from anywhere in our code base. Typically, suppose that we add a simple scene switch function like this one. Here, I'm using Godot's change scene to file built in, and I'm simply assuming that the scene file that we will be passed in is at the root of the project assets folder, so I'll access it with the basic res prefix. And of course, we'll see very soon how to wrap this line in some extra logic to have a visual transition. But for now, we'll just make sure that the callback function for both our scene switch buttons accesses this autoload scene transition script, thanks to Godot's root path prefix that brings us back to the very root of the game tree, and then that it calls its change to scene function with the proper path. And that's it! If we try our game at this point, you see that when we click on our buttons, Godot indeed switches from one scene to the other instantly. So now it's time to see how to actually show some nice transitions during this scene change. The easiest type of transition is a fade to black. Indeed, to do that, all we have to do is put some full screen color panel on the whole scene during our level switch, with an opacity that increases and then decreases back to zero when the second scene has been loaded. So first, let's go back to our scene transition autoload scene, and inside our UI hierarchy, we'll add a color rect node that extends to the full screen and has a black color. 
Also, we'll make sure that our scene is always shown on top of everything else by selecting our root node and increasing its Z index value. Then in our scene transition script, we'll do a few updates. We'll start by referencing this new black color rec node in the ready function and ensure that it starts off fully transparent black, since we don't want it to show initially. We'll also define an exported transition time variable, that will be an arbitrary time in seconds for our scene switch. Then, in our change to scene function, we'll call two new functions, transition in and transition out. Those are pretty self-explanatory, they will be the two pieces of logic we call just before and just after our logical scene switch has happened to perform the visual transitions. More specifically, in our case, to do our fade to black switch, we'll rely on some basic twin objects to have the alpha component of our color rex modulate color increase from 0 to 1 during the in transition and then decrease back from 1 to 0 during the out transition. Also, since our time variable is for the entire transition, we should actually divide it by 2 in each twin to have the in and out transition each last half the time. And by the way, if you want a bit more details on twins, don't forget that we discussed those deeper in this previous video of the series. But anyway, at this point, we should have our new transition system ready to roll, right? Well, if we try this out, we'll see that there's actually a little issue, cause the change to scene method doesn't really wait for our fade-in to finish, before changing the scene and transitioning back out, so it doesn't really work, we don't see any visual transition. The solution is to force our in transition to finish before going further, thanks to the await async C -sharp mechanic. Basically, by importing the system.threading.tasks built-in c package and having our transition in function return an asynchronous task, we can await it in the change to scene method, which we also make async, which really means that we can await the twin inside our transition in method until it triggers its finish signal. Of course, we don't need to do the same for the out transition, because we don't have anything to do after this out transition, so we don't need to wait for it to finish. And there we go! If we retry this, we see that our fade to black transition indeed plays properly whenever we click our buttons, and our game thus switches between our two scenes with our very first custom visual transition. Okay, now that we've got the main idea in place, let's see another cool type of transition, the crossfade transition. To do this, this time, we can't just use a Godot built-in node type as is and call it a day, cause we're going to have to find a way of remembering what our current scene looked like before the transition started, so that we can blend it with the target one gradually. The trick here is to use a texture rect, once again full screen, and dynamically compute its texture at runtime, when we click our scene switch button. Basically, by taking a live screenshot of our game, and putting it in this texture rect, we'll be able to do this random mixing and get our crossfade. So let's go back to our scene transition script and do the following modifications. First, we're going to declare a little C sharp enum with all different types of transitions, and we'll create a new variable with this enum so that we can easily pick the type of transition that we want to use. Then, we'll reference our new texture rect node in the ready function and ensure that it starts off fully transparent white. And finally, we'll update our in and out transition methods. So for the crossfade, we don't really have any visual in transition, since we want to fade from our current render, so we won't need a twin here. However, we do need to take our live screenshot and assign it to our texture rect. We can do this thanks to a very neat Godot built-in, the getViewport.getTexture function, which allows us to easily get back the current game render as a texture. We can then convert it to an image and back to a properly configured 2D texture for our UI element with a few more built-ins. Then we should also make sure that our texture rect node modulate color has an alpha of 1, meaning it's opaque since we want it to be ready for the fade-out after the switch. This fade-out will happen in the transition-out function, 
and it will work the same as for the faded to black transition type, we'll create a twin and have it decrease the alpha component of the texture rec node's modulate color to zero. Except this time, we'll use our transition time variable directly, since we have only this visual switch and no in transition, so no need to cut it in half. But in any case, here we are! If we pick this new type of transition in the inspector of our scene transition autoload route and replay our game, we see that when we click our buttons, Godot now crossfades between each render over a small amount of time. Now to wrap up this tutorial, let's quickly see how we could make some other types of transitions and, more precisely, slide transitions. I'm not going to go into all the details, cause this tutorial is already a bit long, but here's an overview of how we'd need to update our script to handle these transitions. First of all, of course, we'd have to add them to the transition type enum. Then we could use Godot's built-in twin easing and transition types to better customize the speed up and slow down effects on those slide movements. These slide effects would also use our texture rect, since they also rely on a still render of the scene, but the difference is that here we rather run twins during the in transition that offset the texture rect from its current position to a specific out of screen location, depending on the type of slide we want to do. And you see that this is where we apply the twin easing and transition types we exported above. Finally, we don't need to do anything in the out transition logic. Of course, if you want to study this code at your own pace, don't forget that you can get it for free on my GitHub. But in any case, we now have a pretty cool library of basic scene transitions that we can pick directly from the inspector in our autoload scene and that give a bit more punch to our scene switches. You could obviously design a whole bunch of other transitions, those were just basic examples, but hopefully they give you the tools to make quite a lot of variations of your own. So, here you go! You now know how to implement simple scene transitions in Godot using autoload, some UI elements, and nice built-ins like twins or viewport textures. I really hope you liked this episode, and of course, I want to thank my brand new Patreons for their support. In particular, a huge thank you to my Square member Achilles and to David Athey, who just joined as a line member. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it, subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones, and perhaps even drop a comment with ideas of good tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care!